no choice but to do. Hmm. He used to date Scarlett Johansson. Oh. Didn't don't we know what she looks like naked now too? Well, we do, but like you know, how do you go from like all right, Scarlett Johansson to Lena Dunham? Now, I understand this. I, I get that Lena Dunham is uh, a pear-shaped individual and um, a representative of a large portion of the American female population, and there is beauty in her bravery to uncover herself and to empower other females by not doing sit-ups on her own. But he- here's the thing: like to go from Scarlett Johansson to Lena Dunham. It tastes morph and change. Maybe after going like with a really smoking hot chick, like Scarlett Johansson, you're just like you know that's kind of overrated. I I, I want to be with someone that uh, stimulates my mind. I'm gonna date Lena Dunham. Honey, I'm tired of the Whole Foods uh, grocery <laughs> store. Time for the 99. Let's go. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's an interesting one. The uh, that, that that band, whatever band Jack Antonoff sings in, immediately became more interesting to me when I found out he'd seen Scarlett Johansson naked. Because you look at him, and his band's successful. Not that successful. He's not especially good-looking in her or anything like that. But, like, he can get Scarlett Johansson to disrobe. So I'm, like, listening to his record going, like, I might learn tricks by trying to absorb some of this guy's wisdom because clearly he is uh, seeing chicks naked that uh, a man of his looks intellect and financial position should not necessarily be seeing naked I might be able to learn some stuff by listening to his records I haven't learned anything but I do picture Scarlett Johansson naked every time I listen to him so that's made me like him a lot more what else at least he's not as sad as he used to be it's oh, a line from his fun yeah yeah uh, a website for Kirk Cameron's upcoming Christmas movie was disrupted by Islamic hackers. Yeah, Islamic hackers mm. hacked Kirk Cameron's Christmas movie website. If nobody minds, uh, I'm going to go ahead and side with the bad guys on this one. In general, not so much, but this is a cause I feel as though I can get behind. <laughs> the last thing that we need is someone trying to sabotage Kirk Cameron's career. He's doing a fine job of that on his own. I'm glad the Islamic <laughs> uh, terrorists are paying attention to pop culture, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what? I mean, like, on the one hand, it's kind of funny. On the other hand, it just lends credence to... You know what? I bet they didn't. I bet they didn't hack Kirk Cameron's movie. I bet that's a publicity stunt where they're just like, Oh, yeah, this piece of crap-based Kirk Cameron faith movie. No one's going to care about it. No one's going to... Oh, wait a second. If we can set it up so this is the movie the terrorists don't want you to see, well, then people will flock to it in droves. So, yeah, like, oh, yeah, Islamic hackers got to our website. Fortunately, we have overcome, and the movie will be in theaters December 18th. Still no one will care. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, What else? An NBC producer was busted for filming himself having sex with his girlfriend without her knowledge and then posting it on the interwebs. Yeah. On the bright side, it's the first thing NBC has produced in years that anybody watched. Yeah, I have to Google that. I yeah. I wonder which NBC <laughs> producer it was. No, yeah, I don't know. My favorite one. Don't know who it is, but now my favorite one. Uh, what else? Robert Pattinson is dating an English pop singer. Oh, yeah, the uh, Twilight guy. Who, uh, Twilight guy who was with... Is that Pale Dude? This is... Yeah, yeah, it's a vampire, the English teenage vampire, who uh, was with the pale. What? What? Wow! What was that? This shows name? how <laughs> out of touch I am with today's youth. <laughs> Cri- is it Kristen Stewart? Kristen? Yeah, is that? Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, the one that was dating Kristen Stewart until she uh, cheated on him. Uh, but yeah, Robert Pattinson dating an English pop singer said what he likes the most about her. Oh, she doesn't screw other men. <clears throat> what else? A new theater in Los Angeles emits smells based on the movies it shows. Mm-hmm. We're finally there. 4D Smell-O-Vision. Go mm. see The Expendables 3. Whole place reeks of Bengay. <laughs> Go on. Two Iowa women got married after being together for 72 years. Yeah, lesbian couple from Iowa. Been together Did 72 years. Finally got married. Yeah, it was really sweet, actually. I thought it was. I, I thought it was very sweet. 72 years of a lesbian relationship, which probably means that during that time they've gone through 25 Subarus, watched 6,000 softball games, and attended a total of 48 Lilith fairs. Uh, I'm just guessing. What else? 
Well, Russia began construction on billion dollar spaceport. You know, I saw this piece of news when I was doing my usual web crawl, wondering what I was going to talk about this morning and uh, trying to figure out the events of the day. And um, yeah, when I saw a Russian story, it made me happy because I knew Funkhauser would be able to break out his incredible Eastern European accent. It comes which I voluntary. Re- I don't know how it comes. <laughs> It's my favorite thing you do. Um, let, let's just read the headline again, just for me. Russia began construction on billion-dollar spaceport. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you must those... work for it. <laughs> don't those... Build tanks. Buy wheat. Drink vodka. Ah, find me moose and squirrel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Billion-dollar spaceport. You know, Russians, there's a cheaper way to explore heavenly bodies. You hack Jennifer Lawrence's iPhone. <laughs> You're not uh, responsible for titties on web. <laughs> Can you say? I guess you just did, so I, I won't draw any more attention to that word. That strange Russian man who came in here and read the news for five seconds said, "It's okay in my country. Out. I don't understand." <laughs> yeah. uh, her lady part hang low like sleeve of wizard. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, the average person spends 315 days of their life hungover. Oh, good. Rejoice. It's an area in which a lot of people I know are way above average. Enjoy AD on the go. iHeartRadio presents AD. If you want to weigh in, tweet us at ADSXE. At FunkFM is where you can find us on the Twitterverse. Reaper Garcia. And by, I love it when people tweet along with the show. You and I have talked about this in the past, but radio, television... I don't know, printed media, entertainment, media in general. It used to be a one-way street. Guys like me would talk. It would go uh, into a microphone through a complex series of processing equipment uh, up to a repeater and uh, be bounced out uh, via frequency modulation to you. And uh, if you really liked or disliked what I said, maybe you'd send an email or write a letter to my boss or me. And that used to be the extent of uh, radio and TV and entertainment and media in general. It was a one-way street. Now it's a two-way street. And if, you, if you're if you part of the radio family, if you're tweeting, you're not just tweeting along with this show. I consider you to be a contributor. But yeah, Reaper Garcia has contributed to the show. We were talking about uh, uh, about getting sick. Everybody seems to be getting sick and what you can do to avoid it. And uh, he's gone on the record saying that bourbon and more bourbon doing during flu season is my secret to healthy living. But you already do that, don't you, Funkhauser? Every, every day. Yeah, really? Bourbon? Seems no, like such a no, manly, actually. grown-up drink. <laughs> bourbon is like for Grandpa, you know? <laughs> I gotta evolve I, to bourbon. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's like, I don't drink, but if I did, and someone said, you want a bourbon? I would have to be like, I don't know if I'm grown-up enough for that yet. That seems like... <laughs> Maybe just a little know. bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I mix it with some soda pop or something? I don't know. But, like, yeah, manly men uh, drink bourbon and apparently don't get sick. So thank you, Reaper Garcia, for your contribution to the show. Uh, when it comes to the show of the United States of America, uh, let's talk for a second, if we may, about uh, the Founding Fathers and some of their beliefs. I have some fun quotes. Uh, United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. John Adams, 1797. Uh, Benjamin Franklin said, I have found Christian dogma unintelligible. Early in my life, I absented myself from Christian assemblies. Treaty of Tripoli began under President George Washington. Presented by President John Adams, ratified unanimously June 7th, 1797. And that's where we get the quote, the United States is in no sense founded upon the Christian religion. 
John Quincy Adams was sworn in using a book of laws instead of the Bible because he wanted to maintain the separation of church and state. Now, oh wait, here, here's another good one. Millions of innocent men, women, and children since the introduction of Christianity have been burnt, tortured, fined, imprisoned, yet we have not advanced one inch toward uniformity. What has been the effect of coercion? To make one half of the world fools and the other half hypocrites. Thomas Jefferson. Now, understand me on this one. I'm not in any way, shape, or form having to go at anybody's spirituality or what they find to be important or what they believe in in this world. No, not at all. I respect whatever it is you believe as long as you're not hurting someone. I think there's tremendous value in spirituality. We discussed Andrew W.K.'s take on spirituality and the importance of prayer yesterday and the act of getting on your knees and praying, even if you're not necessarily a believer in anything. Getting on your knees is humbling yourself. It is showing ultimate respect for everything that is not you. And I think that is important. And I would never in any shape or form take away or detract from someone's spiritual beliefs. They're too important. Unless they're hurting someone beheading someone, stuff like that, then, yeah, that, that's kind of where, oh, you're beheading people, yeah, that's not okay. You're doing it because your version of God says to do that? Mm, this is a kind of religion I think that we might want to stamp out, at least that uh, rather extreme faction of it. But I, I get into all this and the wishes of our founding fathers with regard to us being a theocracy because, well, we're not a theocracy. We're not yet. An atheist Air Force sergeant has been told he won't allow to re-enlist a sergeant who's been at it for a while, if he refuses to say, and I quote, so help me God as he takes the oath. Yep. Atheist airman denied his request to re-enlist because he won't swear to God. And now he's getting ready to take the military to court. This is a sergeant. He's rather committed to the military. He's gotten promoted up to the rank of sergeant. And, well, here's the thing about that. Just by signing up for our military, just by being willing to put on a uniform when he first started out, before he worked hard, climbed the ranks, and made it to sergeant, before that, he was uh, someone that was willing to lay down his life and make the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms, including the freedom to worship or not worship as we please. So... Yeah, we need as many of those as we can get, and we're not looking after them, or rather the government is not looking after them uh, when they are done risking their lives for our freedom and things of that nature, and now they're making it harder for him to continue what he's doing. Yeah, this is what's going on. He's getting ready to take the military to court. The deadline for re-enlisting expires for this guy in November. He's at the Creech Air Force Base in Nevada. His name hasn't been released, but he's going to be forced to sue the government in a federal court. In the past, an airman could opt for alternative phrases and omit the words, so help me God, but the U.S. Air Force has changed its policy as of October 2013. Why? Why plunge us back into the dark ages? Now, actually, no, no, no. I mean, you know, 200 years ago or so, when uh, um, people found truth to be self-evident and we found it in America, there was that whole sort of like rather, uh, <laughs> there was that whole rather pronounced idea of separation of church and state. So why, in October of 2013, did they change the oath it was necessary to take to re-enlist? think swearing to a God he doesn't believe in makes it that much more legit? No. If he swears to a God he doesn't believe in, well, then I question everything else he's saying, because clearly that part's a lie. The hell are you thinking? The other branches of the American military don't require the reference to God and make the phrase optional. An attorney for the Air Force, though, says, this is the only branch, to my knowledge, that's actually requiring everyone in all instances to use this religious language. We're not a theocracy! Nor are these people fighting for one. Nobody should be forced to say, so help me God. Delivering fast.